Welcome back, and once again, I'm joined with a team from Albany Urology. I'm joined with Dr. Ajib, Governor Henderson, and Rodney Co. Before we went to break, we were talking about conditions, prostate cancer with men. Now, Governor, I'd like to come to you. Is prostate cancer the most common pathology that affects the prostate? No, um, actually BPH or benign prostate hyperplasia is. Um, and essentially it will affect um, most men over the age of 50 years old. So again, you know, nine out of 10 men usually over the age of 50 uh, will start to develop some type of benign prostatic hyperplasia symptoms uh, whether it be frequency or urgency. Um, and so one of the things is that we must have the patient again come in to be assessed. Oftentimes prostate cancer, BPH, even prostatitis, all symptoms mirror each other. So the best way to really rule out uh, what an individual has is for them to come in and be assessed. Dr. Ajib, why do men have BPH? There are several factors that can lead to the enlargement of the, uh, the benign enlargement of the prostate. The most important one is the hormonal changes. So in men above the age of 50, the male testosterone level will decrease, while on the other hand, the estrogen levels remain the same. And this will lead to the benign enlargement of the prostatic cells. And of course, we, have, we do have the genetic component that also plays a big role um, in BPH. Rodney, can you tell us some usual symptoms that one may experience if he has BPH? Well, the symptoms we look at for BPH are two, uh, obstructive type symptoms or what we call irritating symptoms. The obstructive symptoms can include incomplete bladder emptying, slow urinary flow, hesitancy, and sometimes you'll have components also of the storage issues, which are the irritating factors, frequency, urgency, and what we call nocturia, which is nightly urination. Is it usually a clinical diagnosis? We can assess those symptoms better clinically with our nurses that triage the patients in the room. To ask uh, from the American Neurological Association guidelines, we try to do a symptomatic score and score those on basis of how we treat them. Uh, we have something called a non-invasive flow study, which a patient can come into the office and we can do a private uh, flow test, which can show us how obstructive the symptoms are. Dr. Ajib, I'd like to come back to you now. Let's talk about what are treatment options of BPH? Yes, so when men are diagnosed with BPH and present to our office with um, uh, urinary symptoms, we usually sit with them. And the first thing that we offer is behavioral modifications. So we tell those men to try to decrease their caffeine intake and decrease their um, spices in food and at the same time to abstain from water intake three hours before bedtime. At the same time, we, tell those, we offer medical therapy to those patients and the medical therapy is supposed to help them in better emptying their bladder and shrinking the size of the prostate. And Dr. Ajib, what happens if a patient fails to improve on medical therapy? In that case, we usually ask for other diagnostic tests, like a transrectal ultrasound for us to exactly measure the size of the prostate, and we also perform a cystoscopy, where we bring in a, a scope with a camera for us to see how obstructive the prostate is. Now, after, based on these diagnostic tests, we discussed surgical options with the patients. Now, traditionally, our only available option was TURP, which is resection of the prostate. But that type of procedure was used to be done at the hospital and requires usually an, um, an overnight stay and sometimes two nights at the hospital. Fortunately, nowadays, we offer some minimally invasive procedures. These are the types of procedures that we do here at the surgical center, like Urolift, Resume, or iTent. Again, these are like 10 minute procedures and there are several studies that did show um, that we do have similar results when we compare these minimally invasive pr procedures to the traditional TURP. And how important is it to have the surgical center and is that a benefit for the patients? It is very important because again, as I mentioned before, it's like a 10 minute procedure. So the patients would come to the surgical center and would leave an hour after. Um, and also I would like to mention that these procedures can be done under local anesthesia here at the surgical center. Uh, so some patients, if, like, if let's say they have several medical diseases and it is a problem for them to be put uh, to sleep, we can offer, do those same procedures under local anesthesia and have great results that will really change their life after. We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned and we'll be right back. 